I'm telling you one thing, and it's something that, like this, perhaps uh, you can hear me better. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Marcelo Palermo, El Paso, Texas, and the rest of the world. How are you all doing? The country and the world. Uh, there's lots of ambulances going by, passing by, because I receive information that there have been many COVID-related cases uh, recently. Yeah, that's Sarah. Thank you. That's because I'm picking up my mic. I'm going to have to keep it this way. Uh, many COVID-related cases, and that has to do a lot with uh, the COVID cases picking up in El Paso, Texas. Fortunately, they say that now we kind of brought everything down to a simmer, but we've been absolutely busy with this election, electoral process in this electoral week. But COVID is still here. It's real. It's dangerous. And I will keep on telling everybody to take care. I'm quite isolated here remember always wear your mask when i get into the coffee shop uh, i always wear my mask i got my coffee and i sit here outside because it is very dangerous you have you all have to be very careful you all have to be sure that you have something to clean your hands when driving your car around and please also keep your masks with you if you can there's many ways and many places where you can actually buy your masks now. Uh, try to keep at least around, I'll say, three masks with you. If you're out of your house because you had to work and be around all day long, it's what you probably have to do. It's going to be way better for you. Uh, because when you use a mask during the day for like a period of more than an hour, you leave lots of germs in it and it's always... Uh, beneficial for you to have two uh, or yeah two more extra masks just right there in your car very well then so this is the situation here's what it comes down to let's take it from here uh, the electoral process I mean the formal electoral process is over uh, show Biden and Kamala Harris they have given their acceptance speech Trump has not conceded uh, he's going to dispute the elections, as he said he will. And uh, what we have coming next week is probably a legal process that it's going to start. But again, I don't see any problem with this. And I've been talking to lots of journalists and pundits, specialists, other colleagues, political analysts, uh, international conflict analysts. And we were talking about this, and I, what I was telling them is that you have to let them be. Trump is always going to be Trump. He never changed. He never will. And that's why his followers love him. And that is all right. That's okay. You vote for somebody who you like. You like his style. You, have his, uh, you like his ways. You think that is the person that you need to vote for because it represents, I don't know, if not your values, what you want for your country or the financial, economical projection, whatever it is. This is what I'm saying. There is a reason why four years ago people chose Donald Trump. And there is a reason why now, four years later, people chose Joe Biden. We all have to respect those decisions and those reasons as well. The country seems to be divided, but I think that there is a path to uniting or at least trying to unite most of the country. Remember that President Biden by now he might have already over 75 million votes nobody ever in the history of the united states of america had that amount of votes with trump well i mean he actually achieved something impressive too because he got 70 million votes or a little bit over that i believe that he might get a, no he didn't get two but he was i mean on his way to get 71 million so that is impressive too that shows that we have a nation it has two clear posters. It's somehow we can say that we are divided. So it is a time to heal and unite. And I actually uh, asked, I read a couple of posts from people properly intellectually driven talking about uniting, but uniting because this is a thing. When you live in a country, you move forward. You have to keep on going. You cannot keep bitterness and hate in your heart. You have to open your eyes and see the truth. The truth is that the American people have spoken. We have a projected winner. And now it has to happen what uh, it should. 
if Mr. Donald Trump wants to uh, contest and dispute the results, he has all the right to do so. And I don't think that nobody should complain about it, nor impede him or try to stop him from doing so. As a matter of fact, if I will be Joe Biden, I will welcome the idea of a recount or whatever procedure Mr. Trump wants to uh, follow. Because that, if there's nothing to hide, will actually reassure my victory. To be honest, I really think that the recount will deliver another resounding victory for Mr. Biden. Mr. Donald Trump does not think that way. He thinks that with a recount, he will win the elections. So if he does think so, what he has to do is to ask for a recount. Uh, exactly like you say, Cindy, he is within his freaking right. And as I wrote in the title, Joe Biden must do what he must do because he has been chosen as a projected winner. Again, there's lots of people not understanding. That's why I brought the Constitution here with me. Because in this sacred book, sacred because it is the law of the land. It has nothing to do with the Bible, but lots of inspiration from it too. As many constitutions all over the world in democratic, democratic countries have been inspired and part by sacred books as well. This is the law of the land, the supreme law of the land. Let me tell you how this got to happen. In 1986, a group of people, a group of patriots, starting from, I'm talking about the, the founding fathers, started writing in a New York newspaper something that eventually was called, it turned into a newspaper called the Federalist Papers. The Federalist Papers, Federalist Papers, turned into this sacred book, the law of the land, the Constitution of the United States of America, as you read it here. Declaration of Independence and Constitution is here. One thing is the Declaration of Independence, another thing is the Federalist Papers, this Constitution. This happened in 1787. It's at first, in 1786, 1786, 1786, that year, the Federalist Papers started being published. In 1787, from those papers, the Federalist Papers, the Constitution came around. If you need a copy, Cindy, uh, I, well, first of all, you can download it via uh, internet. If not, I'm going to try to find a copy for you. Uh, this is one from the prestigious, prestigious Cato Institute, as you can see. And uh, it's a very easy read. I mean, not an easy read. It's a very fast read. It's not easy. You need to understand it. You need to study it to understand it. And that's the law of the land. When you get through it, and I'm gonna get, I'm not going to get very technical and specific, because if not, some people are going to get dizzy. But I can tell you one thing: I have been doing this for over two decades, so I think I know a thing or two of what I'm talking about. What happened in this electoral period was what has been happened uh, all through the history of this country, for sure. In a perennial way, we have over, you know, I mean, this country is 241 years old. And it has been perfecting its laws and improving because we're not perfect. I got to tell you a story. The father of this country, of the concept, the main one, we all know who I'm talking about, George Washington, General George Washington, who eventually became the first president of the Union. When he passed away, when he died, he died convinced that the experiment by then, it was called an experiment, that was the American Union, the United States of America, will perish. He thought that the experiment that became our country will perish soon. This is when he died. We're talking about the first president ever. We already have the 46th president who should be sworn on January the 20th, 2021 at 12 p.m. If everything goes the way it's going as of now, that will be Mr. Joe Biden. So think about that when I talk to you about George Washington and actually Mr. Jefferson passed away, the great writer, the great, the, 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 the one who had the inspirational pen, 
He also died thinking that the country they helped create, the country they fought so hard for and to create, will actually be in perilous and very dangerous ways. They thought that the Republic will not survive. I believe that you all hear me well. I'm talking about the forefathers here. So this is a little history uh, blurb that I brought over here for you to understand that we are not unique. We can all be as shallow and pedantic as human beings as to think that every generation does it. So, I mean, yeah, we are. I mean, that's why I'm writing my anti-human manifesto. That book's going to come soon. I mean probably in a good time in between the end of the year or next year but the thing is it's a manifesto against everything that's bad about humans and one thing that's really bad about us is that we have that horrible pride and that pedantic and shallow attitude of thinking that everything is happening during our generations we have COVID-19 and we think that the end of the world is coming now we have a fight during an election time and we think that that's the sign of the end of times. We believe that we are the ones deserving, we deserve for Christ to come among us and walk among this earth when we are here on earth. We think that we are the ones. We have everything in our favor because this is a generation. I have news for every one of you, for everyone all over the world, for all that matters. That has been happened for centuries, for millennia. Ever since human beings have been organized as a society, as a structural um, community, and I'm talking about the basics all the way, the foundational basics all the way to nowadays. Every single generation, we're talking about thousands and millions, millions and thousands, had thought that the end was near. Ever since kings are gone in Mesopotamia decided to organize the first human community, the first kingdom, Doomsday was at the next corner. We are not an exception. We are exceptional as a species, but we are not the exception as a generation. If you will be able to travel in time and you will go 2,000 years ago, and you will have the privilege of seeing Jesus Christ preaching to his uh, apostles and uh, apostles and people going around and you will see the Roman rule world you probably will see people that truly thought that those days were the days of the end of times although Christ said no and if you read the Bible you understand that truly when you read Apocaly Apocalypse you understand that uh, uh, you know what? You understand that when you read Apocalypse, you understand that the message from God should be that nobody, no human, knows precisely when the end of times will come. Although we have many people that are so proud, so pedantic, and that brings shallowness as well, shallowness as well that pretend that they know exactly when things are going to end or how everything is going to happen. I am telling you, we don't know. You don't know, and you know why you don't know, because I don't know. But here's what I know. I know that we humans have to move forward. I know that we had an electoral process, and you, you and me, we all should be celebrating. I see people fighting. I post a comment out of courtesy, because I don't have the obligation to do so. I've been all day long reporting for over 25 media outlets, and to over 25 media outlets, and I really don't have the need to do it. I'll do it because I want to record something for posterity because it is my pay Facebook page and I have the right to do so, as I will. And I receive lots of messages of people not reading through, not understanding, and they start fighting each other right coming after my posts. You all need to chill out. You all need to understand that we're no longer in an experiment. We're improving and as humans, and as also indicated religiously, we're not perfect, we're perfectible. None of us will ever find or reach perfection. We can get as close as we want, but we will die imperfect. Every single one of you, me, all of us, that is the way we're going to be. That is the way we have been and that is the way we are. 
another thing. It will be very interesting and good to start teaching now that the healing process should begin and once and for all and never stop to teach anthropology to our kids since grade one of elementary school. Anthropology for kids. You know why? Because that way I believe, I truly believe, as a social anthropologist, I am a certified social anthropologist. That is, I studied that career and I got my BA in social anthropology. When you teach kids about humans, early humans, and all the way through the generations in a practical way, you let them know that we are more alike than we are different. We could end racism in a matter of one, one and a half, or two generations. I would love to snap racism and discrimination out of everybody's head right away, like this. But we humans are a very complicated creature. Still we can do, we can make things happen. We can do lots of things. And one of the things that we have to do now that the elections are over, uh, there are many runoffs uh, for the Senate and uh, for sure next week we're going to be reading and hearing and seeing a lot about um, President Trump's team suing and trying to contest and contesting the election. Uh, but now that we have all this, we have to take it easy. We have to let things be and flow. If the president has been announced, announcing, I'm sorry, for the last six months, that if he loses, he will contest the election. What makes you think that he wouldn't? He was expecting that something fishy will happen since a long time ago. Is he right? I don't have any proofs. But if he is right, he will have to present the proofs that have to be determining and absolutely laconic so we can know what happened. I tell you what I think that happened. What happened was the electoral process during a time of pandemic. There's another thing that you have to consider and the Trump team will have to consider. Their complaint, their biggest complaint, is about the mailed votes. Hence, uh, talking about those votes, uh, or I'm talking about those votes who actually arrived to the polls via mail. The person who is responsible for all the mailed votes is Mr. De John. Mr. De John was appointed by President Trump. He is a man of his team, a man he trusts. That is why he appointed him as the general postmaster. That is the person in charge, the top authority of the United States Post Services. That said, or that being said, that person with this uh, election uh, uh, dispute is going to be investigated. So all of those things are going to have to be considered by President Trump and his team. Another thing, when you talk about fraud by voting, you have to consider several aspects. I was telling yesterday about a video that was sent to me by a group of concerned citizens who thought that they knew that there were people that died, who died several years ago, and they were voting or they, they received their polls, they received their papers to fill out the vote and send it via mail. I am going to tell you something that you need to understand. If you die, you might keep on receiving or at your domicile, at your address, it might keep on arriving polls or papers for you to vote in elections. Let's say I live in your household and I have malice and bad intentions and I want to fill up your papers and send the votes as if you were voting. First of all, it's a crime. And second, not only you have to risk going to prison for something very stupid, but also, here's another thing. If you're dead and somebody votes for you, when the boat gets to the polling station, to the polls, what happens is, that they check it, you're checked as a dead person, and the vote does not count. So hence, if you're dead, 
You're not voting. If you're dead, nobody can vote for you. That happens in the so-called banana republics. Trust me, I'm a war and combat and conflict correspondent. I've been around, I pretty much went all over around, I cover around 85% of the world. I've been in banana republics. I know how banana republics work. I've been in communist and in socialist countries. And there's a difference too that lots of people here do not seem to understand. One thing is socialism, another thing is communism. Trust me, we're fine. We are not going to turn into a socialist country. We are not going to have a dictator. We are going to keep on having this, the law of the land. This is what rules our country. The sacred law of the land, the Federalist Papers, that from that in between 1786 to 1787 turned into the Constitution of the United States of America. In this Cato Institute uh, little booklet, you also have the Declaration of Independence included, which is what you have in most constitutions. But you know what I'm talking about. This is what rules the country. This is what you have to have at heart, at mind, and at spirit. The Constitution of the United States of America. When you read, you understand, and you live by the law of the land, you see the light when it comes to these kind of situations. Nothing can topple the law of the land in a country that has been organized under those laws. So now if Mr. Trump wants to proceed and contest and dispute the election, he has all the right to do so. Let him do it. And if you are one of the millions and millions of Biden supporters, you should encourage him to do so. Because once you get to see the results, the truth will come out. And once the truth comes out, nobody will be able to dispute it. So when the recount is done, and you see that the results were exactly the same results that we had in the first place, who will be disputing such judgment? Now, if there's something fishy, that something fishy will come around will come to light and we will learn about it. Make no mistake, again, this book and what is written in it will not let it happen. Things will not go wrong. We are going to be imperfect. We are going to have mistakes. In all of the elections we have problems. That is part of the democratic system. A democratic republic I'm not talking about Republicans or Democrats here. I'm talking about the Republic that is our country and our democracy. We are always going to have mistakes. We are always going to have problems. But we're never going to be left adrift because we have the law of the land. And by the law of the land, we live and we die. I'm going to switch now to Spanish, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask, because I have lots of uh, Spanish-speaking uh, members of my audience, and I will be more than happy to sum things up in Spanish. Estaba diciendo que se terminaron las elecciones, y que bueno, eh, llega el punto en donde el presidente electo, proyectado como electo, el señor Joe Biden, eh, ya dio su discurso de aceptación junto a Kamala Harris, me pareció un discurso de unidad, me pareció un discurso interesante, y lo que está pasando ahora es que Trump no acepta los resultados. Y bueno, le voy a decir algo, Biden tiene que hacer lo que tiene que hacer, y Trump tiene que hacer lo que quiere, siempre y cuando lo que quiera hacer esté en el marco de la ley. El presidente Trump viene indicando que va, que va a disputar las elecciones, eh, los resultados de las elecciones, si no le salen favorables, desde hace como seis meses. No es sorpresa que lo haga. Y está en su derecho de hacerlo. Es más, si usted forma parte de los millones y millones que votaron por Biden, aliéntelo a que lo haga. A ver, caray, ¿cuál es el problema? Que haya demoras. Bueno, pues, que el sistema se cuente de nuevo. Y después de eso, el resultado va a ser irrefutable. ¿Qué va a poder decir el señor Trump si de nuevo los votos van a millones y millones para Biden y los delegados salen igual y él pierde? Ahora, si las cosas cambian porque encuentran alguna deficiencia, y estése seguro 
que si hubiera deficiencias ya se hubieran encontrado. Y si las hay y quedaron perdidas, nunca las hubo al nivel del que las están denunciando, las van a encontrar. Y si las encuentran, se va a saber todo. Quien nada debe, nada teme. Entonces no veo ningún problema en que el señor Trump haga lo que dice que quiere hacer siempre y cuando esté en el marco de la ley. Si él quiere gastar un dineral en llevar a su equipo de abogados a que revisen todo y que cuenten todo, pues es un problema de él. Si él verdaderamente está convencido de que ha ganado las elecciones, va a tener que producir pruebas irrefutables. Dudo mucho yo que mucha gente se arriesgue en millones y millones de votos para ir a la cárcel que todos estén falsificando votos o que se hayan falsificado millones pero si hay algo que demuestra que hay un error se va a saber reitero quien nada debe nada teme le cuento otra cosa porque hay mucha gente que no entiende este libro y no entiende tampoco las leyes extras de lo que tiene que ver con el asunto de la, del proceso electoral me mandaron videos, un grupo de personas que no lo hicieron expertos, lo hicieron ciudadanos preocupados y me dicen, bueno, mire señor Palermo Evangel, que este, ha votado gente muerta. Han habido padrones de gente de 102 años que mandaron a grupos familiares y la familia manda el voto. Le tengo una noticia, eh, si usted murió hace tres años y mandaron un padrón a la casa de su familia y algún eh, este, bribón, algún atorrante... Pelafustán decide eh, eh, votar ¿verdad? Y, y mandar ese voto a su nombre para engañar al sistema, cuando el voto llega a la, a la urna, cuando llega la gente, se tiene que chequear, porque se tiene que chequear todo el registro. Cuando usted va a votar, usted pone una licencia, porque usted ya está registrado para votar. Y usted no se puede registrar para votar si no es ciudadano. Y si está muerto, ese voto se va a anular. Tampoco pueden votar ilegal, personas sin papeles, o sea, personas que están aquí ilegal o personas que no están registradas, aunque estén legales, ni tampoco pueden votar residentes permanentes, solo ciudadanos registrados. Entienda, Estados Unidos tiene problemas en su democracia, el mundo tiene más problemas que Estados Unidos, pero somos el país to every, that everybody looks up to, o sea que todo el mundo ve para ver, para tomar un ejemplo. Pero no se olvide que somos 331 millones de personas y hay más de 200 millones registradas para votar. Tampoco se olvide que somos la república, de verdad, en este estilo, de este estilo de democracia, más vieja. Eso no lo sabe. La gente habla de los países de Europa. Le voy a comentar una cosa. Los países de Europa, cuando Estados Unidos se creó, porque los países de Europa eran monarquías. Todo regido por herencia. ¿Verdad? Los reyes que tenían hijos y seguían. Vino la revolución francesa para la época de la revolución estadounidense, pero después vino Napoleón que se le subió el humo a la cabeza y al señor se le ocurrió hacerse rey. El chaparrito se volvió loco y se fue al carajo la revolución francesa. Con todo respeto, pardon my French. Estados Unidos no. Hace 241 años que se conformó y luchó la lucha empieza en 1776, para los 80, 1800, 1781, para el 82 ya Estados Unidos se conforma como nación, con las patas chuecas y todo, pero ahí va, y Washington, el primer presidente juramentado como tal, el padre de la patria, que luchó, ¿eh? peleó la guerra de independencia para crear este país, murió ese señor dudando que la república, o lo que era el experimento de la república entonces, fuera a sobrevivir. También le pasó a Jefferson, el, el hombre de la pluma, ¿verdad? Y la declaración de la independencia. Y sin embargo, acá estamos. Somos muy pedantes los seres humanos, por eso estoy escribiendo mi libro eh, El Manifiesto Antihumano, que es el manifiesto anti todo lo que está mal del ser humano. Nos creemos que nuestras generaciones, cada generación desde que empezó el mundo con el rey Sargón de Mesopotamia y organizó la primera estructura comunal con un reinado y con todas las bases sociales, bueno, las más primitivas, siempre pensamos que el mundo se iba a acabar. Y nosotros no somos la excepción, pedantes, orgullosos, que el orgullo no nos lleva a ningún lado, la Biblia misma no lo dice. ¿Mm? Yo digo, ¿por qué tan orgullosos? ¿Por qué es que todas las generaciones creen que en su generación llega Cristo, que en su generación se acaba el mundo, que no puede ser en la generación que viene, o en tres o en cuatro? ¿No nos dice acaso la Biblia? ¿No nos dice acaso la Biblia ¿Eh? en, en eh, Apocalipsis que solo Dios sabe el tiempo y el momento? del fin del mundo, y que también habla de la llegada 
¿eh? del Redentor como el ladrón en la noche. Y puede significar que mucha gente no se va a dar cuenta, creo que va a ser así. Y más de todo eso, y son preceptos religiosos, vamos a volver a la tierra, acá lo que nosotros sabemos, porque de eso no sabemos. Ustedes no saben nada de eso y yo tampoco, por eso les digo que no saben, porque yo tampoco, porque sabemos de las escrituras y todo, pero lo que va a pasar después, la misma Biblia lo dice. Es para Dios el determinar cuándo, no para nosotros. Dejemos de ser pedantes, nos estamos alejando de la honestidad porque somos demasiado cabezones. Mi amigo José Monterroso, no, no creo que pudo haber fraude. Lo que sí creo, creo que el resultado es lógico, no, no creo que en Estados Unidos pueda haber un fraude así. Lo que sí creo es que si el presidente Trump cree que hubo fraude, está en todo su derecho de presentar pruebas contundentes y tratar de demostrar que lo hubo, pedir reconteo y todo lo que quiera. Y lo tiene que hacer y todos lo tienen que, que, que apoyar en eso, incluso el presidente electo se ha proyectado el señor Biden y sus seguidores y creo que no tendrán problema. Si uno sabe que nada debe, nada, que nada debe, nada debe de temer. Así que no, mi impresión personal es que no hubo fraude. Pero por ahí, si dice Trump que tiene pruebas determinantes, que las presente. No solo ante la justicia, sino ante el público. Yo, de hecho, él ya dijo que tenía pruebas. Él viene diciendo esto desde el miércoles. Yo, si hubiera sido él, ya hubiera presentado las pruebas. Ya estaría en todos lados. Yo recibo mails de todas partes. Miren, tengo fuentes de información, informantes en la Casa Blanca en el Congreso, en los comités políticos, en todos lados. Pues oiga, nadie me dijo todavía nada. Yo les estoy diciendo cuándo me muestran las pruebas. I'm going to say this in English for all my English, uh, my English audience because I didn't say it. I have correspondents. I'm friends and I work with correspondents who are around the White House, at the Congress, at different Republicans and uh, Democratic Party's branches and committees. I was telling and asking them. President Trump said last Wednesday that he had determining proof that there was a fraud, that the election was a fraud, that, that this process was rigged. And I'm asking them, where are those proofs? Because if I will be President Trump, I will have presented those proofs, not only to the public, not only to the just judicial system, but to the public. I will actually sue everyone and I will show everyone the proofs that I'm saying that I do have. That's what I will say. That's what I will do. And again, they're asking me if I think that uh, these elections were fraudulent. I do not think that the election, the, pro the process was fraudulent. But I do think that the president has all the right, he's within his rights, it is within his rights to present evidence and to contest and dispute the election results. I welcome, as a citizen, the challenge of going through the recounting and presenting evidence. I know that it costs money, but I prefer nobody to go to sleep in a matter of a week or two with doubts about how the system works. Again, I said it before in English, I have to say it again. This is the law of the land and this will prevent any fraud, any kind of socialism, communism, uh, dictatorship, whatever totalitarian system that you might think about, It won't happen because we're not ruled by men. We're ruled by the law, the law that were created by enlightened men that set the basis, wisely set the basis for this country to grow. This is the law of the land, the Constitution of the United States of America. Everybody should carry one. And every time you get to a coffee shop like I do, oh, by the way, I still have some. Be sure that you stop to read something a paragraph. The way you go and probably read a verse from the Bible, which is a great thing, it helps me a lot. It encourages me to keep on going through the day. It also does the Constitution. Do something. Open it in any page and read something. You're always going to find wisdom here. Because by this, you and I live by the law of the land. Lo digo en español ahora, lo digo en castellano. Siempre cuando van a un café decía que tengo un traguito. Tengan a mano una constitución, una Biblia. Eh, si el día está pesado, léanse un versículo de la Biblia. Abran la Biblia en cualquier página y la constitución y agarren un, algo, una parte. En este caso, mire, el artículo 2 justo me quedó, que tiene que ver también, hay partes de las elecciones. Y léanlo. Les va a mejorar el día. Porque además, esto es lo que los gobierna a ustedes. Porque la determinaron las personas que crearon esta nación. No es un hombre 
una mujer, un ser humano, vamos a ponerlo así, el que los gobierna, ustedes o el que nos gobierna, esto nos gobierna, esto que fue creado por seres humanos iluminados que tuvieron la visión de ver una tierra que se iba a desarrollar, que era un experimento y que no es una realidad. Y eso pasó en todo el continente americano. La primera fue esta. Es el ejemplo a seguir. Y como les decía también, Europa era regida por monarquías. Acá se llegó para encontrar libertad. Porque si usted quiere ser cristiano, bienvenido. Si usted es musulmán, bienvenido. Si usted es judío, bienvenido. Si usted es ateo, bienvenido. Dese la base de esta constitución en la declaración de independencia. All men are created equal. All men are created equal. Todas las personas, porque men en inglés, cuando lo hablan en ese concepto, en contexto, yo, yo hoy pongo all humans, you know, pero en ese contexto, back in the day, it was about when, when they said, all men are created equal. They're talking about every single human being. Cuando dicen todos los hombres son creados iguales, hablan de todos los seres humanos. Todas las personas son creadas iguales. Mire la significancia de ese concepto en una nación en la cual hemos llegado todos de alguna manera inmigrando. Si no es de primera mano como yo, que soy primera generación en el continente, yo soy hijo de dos papás europeos. I'm the son of two European parents. And I'm, I actually, I am an immigrant here in the States. I'm a citizen, but I came here via Fort Bliss and eventually I stayed here and I decided to settle down in El Paso because it's a place that I love. It's a place that really, it, it was... I mean, it felt like home since day one. O sea, yo estaba acá, ¿verdad? Porque verdaderamente llegué acá porque amo este lugar. Llegué acá y este lugar me llamó y dije, este es mi lugar, esta es mi casa. Eso pasa en lugares como en Estados Unidos. Por eso esto es más importante que Donald Trump, que Joe Biden, que ustedes o que yo. Porque esto va a perdurar por las generaciones venideras. Si dejamos que esto perdure... Esto es lo único que nos salva. Estamos hablando de política. No estamos hablando del mundo espiritual, sino del terrenal, de política. Es por esto que el país llegó a donde llegó. Mire qué librito chiquito. Y este librito chiquito ayuda a que esta nación se convierta en lo que es. It is because of this that we are where we're at. This small little booklet was a trigger for the big great nation that we have today to happen. And it happened because of this. Thank you, everyone. My name is Marcelo Palermo. Can I keep on working? Can I keep on reporting? Perhaps later on, I will come back with another report for my Facebook friends. I love you all. God bless you. And be sure that there are better times to come. We always have to think like that. Gracias a todos. Mi nombre es Marcelo Palermo. Y después me voy a tratar de conectar de nuevo. Y estén seguros que mejores tiempos siempre vendrán. Bendiciones. Que tengan una bella noche. Chao a todos y gracias. ¿eh?